Imagine being one of the wealthiest Americans of all time, but the only thing you want the most, you can't buy for any amount of money. Hi everyone, Ken here. Today we are exploring Otokan Cedar Court. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. In 1867, Otto Kahn was born in Germany. All throughout his youth, he took an interest in the arts, initially setting his sights on a career in music. However, this was not the life his father wanted for him. Kahn's father seared his path towards banking, leading him to become a junior clerk at the age of 17. His competence in finance soon took him across the Atlantic to New York, where he joined Kahn Leb and Company, marking the beginning of a distinguished career in investment banking. Kahn's prowess was not limited to finance. He was instrumental in reorganizing and consolidating major railroads, showcasing his exceptional skills in business strategy and management. All the while, he accumulated great wealth and quickly became recognized as one of the wealthiest men in America. In solidifying his social standing, he married into the Wolf family, joining hands with Adelaide in 1896. Around this time, Adelaide's sister also got married. Their father, Otto's father-in-law, planned a double wedding present for his daughters. Mr. Wolf purchased a large tract of land in Morristown, New Jersey, and hired the esteemed architecture firm of Career and Hastings to design a duplex the likes of which New Jersey had never seen before. In giving each of his daughters an equal gift, two perfectly identical Italian villa-style mansions were designed to sit right next to each other. Both opening onto a court, one would face a pergola, and the other, belonging to the cons, would face the approach beyond the court's balustrade. Unfortunately, Khan's sister-in-law passed away during childbirth, leaving their mansion empty. Then the Khan's villa burned down. They moved into the abandoned one and had the side of their former house reimagined as a ballroom, opening onto a large court with a central pool and fountains. All the while, Khan continued to grow his wealth, which was reflected by the 136 acres of perfectly manicured gardens surrounding his house. Not only were there parterre gardens and a golf course, but a pond with artificial islands was installed. Of the dozens of staff members required to maintain the house, 22 of them were devoted full-time to groundskeeping. Scattered about the property, you could find their cottages secluded in the wooded areas. A fully functioning farm was laid out on another 40 acres to sustain the house with fresh food, and clay tennis courts were rebuilt often to ensure perfect playing conditions. By 1910, the first Autocon country estate known as Cedar Court was functioning as his own private country club. Cedar Court was now his dream house in every way, except for one. But before we dive into that, let's head inside and begin exploring this lavish country estate. Upon opening the front doors, we arrive in the entrance hall, where despite its large size, it has been furnished to make this grand hall appear more cozy. Towards the end of the entrance hall, the ceiling height doubles to allow the grand staircase to swirl from an upper atrium towards the ground. Before we see more of that, let's explore the other rooms on this level. First, Visitors would be ushered into the reception room by the doorman to await their host. From here we can peer beyond the curtains to see the living room finished out with intricate plasterwork and an incredibly ornate marble fireplace mantle. Nearby, the formal living room is styled in a manner of contrast with unpainted millwork spanning the long, clean lines. The dining room continues with rich wood grain but reintroduces touches of ornate artisanry throughout its architectural elements. Above the wood paneling and below the plaster ceiling, we can almost see the murals spanning the frieze. Let's return to the entrance hall and begin making our way up the grand staircase. As we arrive at the landing, we find a comfortable sitting area beyond a colonnade. From here we will venture into the many bedrooms scattered about the second and third floor. Each of the bedrooms has been decorated in different styles, though they all boast busy wallpaper matched to the curtains. Some are larger while others are more quaint without sacrificing luxuries such as a fireplace and large windows from which to overlook the estate. Up on the third floor, we find the terrace spanning between Cedar Court's dueling towers. We can imagine the cons relaxing in their swinging bench while overlooking their perfectly manicured gardens. Even though Otto Kahn had perfected his property, there was something missing that money could not buy. The area around Cedar Court had become a retreat for other wealthy families, but due to differences in their religious beliefs, the Khans were never accepted into the local society. There were no friends to share their golf course with, no women in ball gowns to flood the ballroom floor, and no one to socialize with beyond their gates. The Khans sold Cedar Court and began construction on a new country estate on Long Island known as Ohika Castle. When it was completed, it would become the second largest house ever built in the United States, but that is a story for another time. Cedar Court was demolished to make way for a sanitarium, which eventually gave way to a chemical company and later a condominium development. 
Thankfully, there are still a handful of photos to remember Otokan's first country estate, Cedar Court. Which part of the estate was your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.